Hello everyone, I am Sanal and welcome to Omega Codex. To build your source code and to deploy it using Azure pipelines, we need at least one Azure DevOps agent. It can be a Microsoft hosted agent or a self hosted agent. Today, we are going to explore how to set up a self hosted agent on a Windows server. This can significantly optimize your CI CD pipeline, especially if you are dealing with specific security, privacy, or performance requirements. First, we will discuss what a self-hosted Azure agent is and why it might be beneficial for your projects. Next, we will delve into the installation and configuration of Azure agent on Windows Server. After that, we'll build a .NET Core application using our newly configured agent. If you are new to Azure DevOps pipelines, you can check out this video to learn and about how to set up pipelines using Azure DevOps. In that video, we had used a Microsoft hosted agent to deploy and build our code. Without further ado, let's jump into the details and understand what a self hosted Azure agent is. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. Before we dive into the technical setup, it's crucial to understand what a self hosted agent is and why they can be significant addition to your DevOps toolkit. Let's get a clear picture of what we are working with. Azure DevOps provides two types of agents, Microsoft hosted agent and self hosted agent. Microsoft hosted agents are managed and maintained by Microsoft. In contrast, self hosted agents are set up and maintained by you on your own in your own structure. This could be on premise or in a virtual machine in the cloud. Why choose a self hosted agent? Firstly, it gives you more control over the environment the agent runs in, allowing you to customize the hardware, the installed software, and the network it operates in. This is particularly beneficial for specific build or test requirements that are not readily available in Microsoft hosted environments. For organizations with strict compliance or security requirements, self-hosted agents ensure that your code and data never leave your controlled environment. You may also have an internal artifact repository or a, or a NuGet source which you want to use for your build which is not accessible on a Microsoft hosted agent. Also, you can get a better performance as you have more control on the resources you use for setting up the agent. Now that we have understood what and why, let's talk about how. But first, we need to ensure we have everything in place. To set up a self-hosted Azure agent, you will need few things. A server, Windows or Linux, this can be an existing server or a new virtual machine, an Azure DevOps account and administrative access to both. Make sure your server meets the minimum hardware and software requirements for Azure DevOps agents. We'll be using a Windows server for this video. Setting up the Windows server involves a few key steps. Ensuring that the operating system is up to date, configuring the necessary network settings and ensuring all required software is installed. First and foremost, ensure your Windows is up to date. This means running any pending updates. An updated system not only ensures compatibility with Azure DevOps, but also keeps the environment secure. Your server should be able to communicate with Azure DevOps services. This might involve configuring firewalls or proxies if you are operating in a restricted environment. Ensure that all software required by the agent is also installed. This includes the .NET framework or any other dependencies specific to your development needs. As your server will be part of your CI CD pipeline, it's important to follow best practices. This includes using a service account with limited privileges for the agent and ensuring your server is protected against unauthorized access. So I will be using a Windows VM on Azure to use as my server. If you are new to it or need to know how to create one, you can check out this video which is mentioned above in that video as well i have used a windows am and explained how to create one so let's connect to the server here we will use the standard rdb connection to connect to the server So I've connected to my server. Let's first install the required .NET version. So the code which I am going to build is a, is a relatively older code on .NET 6. So we will install .NET 6. We'll just come to downloads. 
and we'll look for an older version so let's go to dotnet 6 and install windows x64 sdk so for building the code we will need the sdk if it was to run uh, an application the runtime would have been sufficient i'll just quickly run the installer and install the sdk we'll click install installed now that the required dependency is installed let's come to the main event that is installing our agent so for that let's come back to Azure devops and this is the project which i will be deploying uh, using this agent and this has been the same project i have been using in the previous videos uh, related to azure devops so to install a new agent we'll have to download the agent we can click on this project settings in bottom and then come to agent pools if you come to agent pools you can see the already configured agent pools which are using the microsoft hosted agents to add a new pool we'll click add pool and we have to mention what type of agent we will have in that pool so we'll select self-hosted and let's call the agent pool as self-hosted agents we grant access to all pipelines and create it so now let's open it and let's click on this new agent so this gives you three options windows mac os or linux so mac os would work on if you have a mac machine you can use that or if you have a linux server you can use the linux agent we have a windows server so we'll be using the windows agent so let's click on download to download the agent so let's save it let's copy this agent and put it in our agent server we could have opened the same portal here as well but that's fine okay so we have copied the agent let's extract it and maybe to c drive agent it's exported to our agent folder now let's open command prompt and start it as an administrator and let's go to the agent folder and all we have to do is run the config command so here it will ask for the server url so for that we have to come back to a devops portal and just copy the url till the part of your organization name so whatever is your devops url azure devops server url like if you're using azure devops services then it is dev.azure.com and then slash you would have an organization name so we have to only copy till that part and that is our server url and the authentication type so here it's asking press enter for pat so pat is personal access token so we'll be using pat so for that let's come to our account come to personal access tokens and let's create a new token call it self-hosted agent maybe keep it valid for 90 days and here if you come you if you click on all spokes show all spokes here at the bottom we have to select in the Egypt pools read and read manage and we have to copy this value mentioned here make sure you copy it and keep it safe because azure devops will not show this value again so let me just put it somewhere safely and close let's come back to our server and yes we want to use pat so let's press enter and this just paste the personal access token you can just right click and it would if you have copied the personal access token it would just paste it now we have to mention the agent pool name let's come back here and this is the name of our agent self-hosted agent so let's put the name of the agent pool and whatever name we want to give so i can also press enter and it would pick the server name as the name of the agent so to make it simple let's keep it the same and now it is scanning and then setting up the agent so you can specify what you want to call the work folder for your agent so work folder is the folder used by the agent whenever it is building your source code so we'll just press enter to use the default and whether we want the agent to run as a service we want to do run it as a service yes to enter enable service type we'll just make it yes and we want whether we want the user account to use the user account we want to use for the service is NT authority network service 
and then next is enter weather to prevent the service starting immediately after configuration is finished now we want the service to start so with that our agent is set up which was not very difficult and let's see if our agent is connected to azure devops or not now if we come to the agents tab you can see that our server is online and the agent version is mentioned here so now agent our agent is set up so let's go back to the pipelines and try to run it using this one so we'll edit it so here on this pipeline we have a yaml file which is using templates so let's jump to individual templates and update the pool name let's use name as the self-hosted agent so that's our pool name and save it so now for our build process we have defined the self-hosted agent so let's see how it works out let's open this so now since it's the first run it is downloading all the required tasks which it needs to run on our agent it's almost done with the build and it is publishing the artifact to artifact staging directory that's it so build is completed using our self-hosted agent and if you see it has started with the next step since we didn't make any changes to the next stage it is still using a microsoft hosted agent so even this can be done that in different stages you can use different agents and it since Microsoft gives you one free agent, one self-hosted free agent and one Microsoft hosted agent when you are using Azure DevOps services. So you can utilize both of them by using different agents in different stages. If you come to this pipelines and parallel jobs under project settings, you can see that, you know, how much of uh, free jobs are available for you. So one parallel job is available with 1800 minutes on as a Microsoft hosted agent and you have one self hosted agent with no restrictions for minutes. So the stages which are taking more time to build, you can do it on your self hosted agent and then other things you could do it with your Microsoft hosted agent. Even with the best setup issues can arise. Let's look at some problems and how to solve them when setting up Azure DevOps agent. If your agent isn't connecting to Azure DevOps, check your network settings. Ensure that the server can reach Azure DevOps services over the internet. Also verify your firewall and proxy settings if applicable. For build failures, examine the build logs in detail. Look for errors related to dependencies, environment configuration or script failures. These logs are invaluable for pinpointing the source of the problem. If you have installed any new dependencies, make sure that you restart the agent on the services window. If your agent is slow or unresponsive, check the server's resource utilization. Overutilization can lead to performance issues. Consider scaling your server's resources or optimizing your build process. Now, it's important also to maintain your agent. Keep your server and agent software up to date. This ensures compatibility and security. Regularly check the health and status of your agent. Set up alerts for any critical issues. Always back up your agent configurations. In case of server failures, this will allow you to quickly set up the agent. Use a dedicated service account with limited permissions for running the agent. This enhances security. Setting up a self-hosted agent might seem daunting at first, but as you have seen, it's a process filled with valuable learning opportunities. Not only does it give you more control over your builds, and deployments, but it also enhances your overall DevOps skills. Try setting up your own self-hosted agent. Use this video as a guide and don't hesitate to experiment. Make sure you install all required dependencies to run the build successfully. If you have any questions, thoughts or experiences you would like to share, please leave them in the comment section below. Your feedback not only helps me create better content, but also helps others who might be facing similar challenges. You can also find the link to the source code in the description box below. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Omega Codex if you haven't done it already. Thanks for watching, stay curious, keep learning and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.